Hello, everybody. It's uh, Tuesday. Um, it's uh, kind of a fall day here, uh, raining a little bit, winds blowing. Um, I keep, you know, it's funny because it was like mid seventies, and I, I, uh, I keep telling myself I got to get ready for the winter. Um, but you know, then we have these spring days. So I want to show you two things. The first one is this. And I, I said that I was going to do this a couple of weeks ago, but this interday stock signal app, which basically looks at the moving averages and you can set them um, to whatever period you want on the one minute chart. So I'm going to run this and we'll see. But in the meantime, um, I use the app for US Steel. Um, did a pretty good trade. I think I got in at... 45, which is might have been this candle. I think I added here and then basically peeled them off. The trade that bugs me the most um, is the spy. So, and here's the, the the app working. Three is below the five, but I got in at 117 central which is right, let's do this, at a time period, at one, let's say here. So I get in at this candle because I saw these three red candles and then it started retracing on me and I, and I got out at 134, which is which is probably the top of this candle. Let me get rid of these drawings. Um, so I was short here, the, like the 352s or whatnot, and that expire tomorrow. And I I didn't hold it. I I I don't know if I chickened out or if I was tired of. I was up this morning, like I said, with those X trade, with that X trade, and then kind of gave it all back. Um, and I just, I, I didn't want to lose more, um, which I guess, long story short, is kind of know where your stops are. Um, theoretically, I should have stopped up in here. Um, so, um, so yeah, it, it, it was an interesting day. Um, the app, the five minute app worked tremendously. Um, I have the five, the, I have the three year, I think, spy up. Um, remember we drew this line a long time ago and we're kind of batting, that's this line here. We're kind of batting around it. We're below it now. Um, you know, we tried to make up this ground once we broke below it, but now we're selling off again. So one, two, three, four straight red days. Um, let's see what this app is doing. Oh, three cross below the five. Um, so theoretically, I could go look at the one minute chart and, and plot these things, but this is the concept of the app. Um, I'm still working on it. Um, like I said, you can update um, simple moving average or extended in what moving average period. Um, so that's coming. Um, lastly, and then I think I'm gonna turn it over to Alan for a minute because he's chomping on the bit. He's leaving again for Phoenix. Um, man on the go, which I, so hopefully someday I'll get there. Um, oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> I, you know, I because I've said it before, you know, I'd love because my anniversary is the end of September. I would love to like pick up and, you know, take the wife to Vermont for the weekend or for the extended weekend kind of thing. And um, because it's amazing out there this time of year, it may be late now, but, you know, early fall. Um, so I want to be able to do that. Um, so I. I'm still um, in the millionaire mind with Daniel Gomez. I'm looking at um, 
why is it not show my screen? Um, I'm actually planning on traveling down to San Antonio in the beginning of November. Daniel has a millionaire, millionaire mind conference. Uh, it's a two day session where you um, basically learn about his concept for developing yourself and um, being the best possible person that you can. Um, and speaking of that, many of you know, Alan passed out um, maybe 10 emails um, and I will work on forwarding those emails onto you. So if you haven't received them, let me know your email address, um, probably through Instant Messenger, um, and I'll send them along. So that's on my list to do. So hopefully you guys are doing good. Um, that's really all I have. I don't know, Alan, how you doing? Doing good. Um, so going back to the millionaire mind. So I went to the first uh, one that I ever did uh, back in uh, about 12, 13 years ago in Florida. I'll never forget it. I had to borrow money for the plane ticket. I had nowhere to stay. I had to stay with for a friend. Went to the first one with Harv Eker, Millionaire Mine. What I find interesting is that Daniel Gomez's book uh, and his course is very similar to the same Thing that I learned in the millionaire mind. So I think it can help you. Uh, I'm going to San Antonio. I'm going to give some assistance in the uh, training and uh, hopefully it'll be kind of fun to see you there. Um, and so I think the, the biggest thing is, is that you have to develop the right mindset um, and really work on future thinking. If uh, you don't think you're going to go ahead and ever uh, get the house of your dreams. Um, you're right, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. because it's all, because it's because it, it's all it's all in your mind. You you can't ever entertain those those kind of thoughts. The, the thoughts are, uh, I'm going to get the the house of my dreams. It looks like this. I'm not sure how I'm going to get there, but I'm going to get there. And um, and it's a belief in a faith system kind of thing, but um, it's also being positive. Um, you think in the, the book of uh, nah, the Old Testament where they talk about the 10 spies went ahead and went to Israel and they said, uh, well, what was the report? Well, 80% of the people gave a bad report. Uh, it's the same It's the same thing in, in, in everything is that most people have to recondition their mind because they're going to give a bad report. Your mind, that's how it works. So um, Daniel Gomez uh, giving you some some techniques he's learned in terms of to go ahead and develop that that mindset. Going to uh, stock trading uh, in uh, the Millionaire Mind Tents of San Antonio is uh, is at the end of November, um, but it's uh, I think the week before Thanksgiving. Uh, good week to travel because airfare is usually pretty cheap. Um, the markets. My experience is that. You always have an up cycle after Yom Kippur. What happens, which I, I've never really understood why, is that it is always down. Because remember last year, it's always down after the holiday is over. And it's like it takes a while for the buyers to come back. And, and that's where we're at. That's what we saw today. We were up 400 points today. Um, my app was telling me buy U.S. Steel, buy, um, well, actually, it wasn't U.S. Steel, buy um, uh, Exxon Mobil, Oxy, um, and um, it actually had Google Flash, and it had, um, uh, let's see, who, what was the other one? Um, anything that was energy-related, um, actually, uh, uh, anything energy, steel, uh, they were all, um, uh, Oracle, uh, that was another one. Yeah. And uh, so what the what was going on is that um, uh, you saw a beautiful uptick. Everything started down again, like it it has been. But we got a 400 point increase. I'm thinking because we started up, I think it's going to make the Asian markets in Europe um, continue the upward cycle. We might actually start to get some footing and, and start to see an up uptick. Um, that's what I'm 
banking on, but it's hard to say because the thing is, is that um, uh, we have to get some buyers to come back, but this is normal. You think it's not normal? You're wrong. <laughs> it is normal. Yeah. Uh, I've seen this uh, many times. I just don't get it because everybody sells off. Then they buy it back up um, after uh, Rosh Hana, and then they wait. What they're waiting for or how that happens, I don't get it. Um, but there yeah. is a wait that happens. Um, and then what it is is that my experience is that um, people that trade have rules. And I think the rule is they wait for one green day or one up day. Then they buy in the next day. Yeah. If you think about it, that would have worked out beautiful. I mean, because the thing is, we went down huge uh, the day after Yom Kippur. It went down huge. Um, and so, um, you know, even even this morning. So um, we, we've definitely seen that uh, pattern this time. Uh, so um, uh, as Brian said, he's working on an app. Excited about that. Simple moving averages, which should help you on the trade. Um, I was asking Brian for clarification. What what time was the drop? Because my experience is the drop occurs either at 122 or 222. But a very yeah. positive signal, very positive signal for it to go ahead and, and, and uh, be able to bounce. It was up 400 points, and then it went down 100 points, and then it finished up like 80 points up. That's a very positive signal. Um, what, did you get an exact time on that, Brian? Yeah, let me share this. I was kind of surprised on how much. So we, you know, we're kind of flat through here. And then 1330, which is 230 Eastern is when we basically just mm -hmm. off. Yeah. And this was this huge, this, this move was huge. I mean, here's the five minute high and low. I mean, like, and we gapped down in the morning. So we sold off and then buyers kind of took control until, and I'd be curious to know like what, and, and maybe it's just a timing thing that it's 2.30, it starts to sell off. Um, 2.22 is, is what the, um, my experience has been is it's 2.22. Um, it's like the computers go ahead and, uh, and say, you know, we're done for the day. <laughs> um, but uh, with your line there, let me show you how I would trade this if I was uh, long um, the, uh, the the market and I was watching this on a computer screen. Take that one line and go to that top point, uh, that 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 red uh, very top. Yeah, see so that five minute rule will still work right there, and then and then uh, drop it below oh, that. You mean like? Um... Yeah. Basically like this. Yeah, yeah or, or you can even do it to the red one. Okay. But you see how, it, what it is, is it never could go ahead and break it. You see how it tried? Right? See, this is what I'm trying to get at, is that if you want to be a professional trader, this is what my experience is, is the best way to trade. You set those two lines. You know, the market's already pushing negative. So what it is, is that, when it pushes that five minute low, that, that one right there, the blue that's one. where you're buying. Yeah. And then what it is, is that you're setting your stop just above that. So you're giving yourself a window. You're giving yourself a trade. Most people trade by the seat of their pants and have no concept why they're even doing what they're doing. That's me. I, I got to be more organized. I was going to say, that's me. I, you know, I logged back in and I saw these two red candles. I'm like, oh, I got to get in this. This is going to drop. So, you know, and, you know, and, on, and in my defense, and it's going to sound like an excuse, but I'm, even today, I knew my mind wasn't in the market. And the main reason is because I'm pretty cons consumed by work right now. Um, so should I be trading? Probably not. I do it just for fun. Um, but yeah, I, it, it should be more of a concentration on, you know, once it gets up here, oh. watching this for this 
this break above, break well, below. Kind of thing. I'll show you. I'll show you a good trade. Google. Bring up Google. I was in Google Plus today. Google. Geology. Look at that, that. Look at that beautiful five minute candle at the top. Yeah. So put the two lines again, and and I'm going to go ahead and show you guys my experience how a professional trader trades. <clears throat> but you you're you're there, and then you go ahead and set the the five minute low. Right here. On the bottom. No, below that. Do it on the, the red one. I mean, that that's an easy one to do it on, but you kind of get my point. You see how it kept retesting it? Every yeah. time it retests that, you go ahead and that's where that's your buy point. See right, that? And then, yeah, and then your stop is... So you, technically, you don't... A professional trader doesn't buy like 10,000 shares. He'll go ahead and nibble. So the first nibble is the first one that approaches that line. You see where I'm showing? Yeah. You know, where it comes back to that. Then he would go ahead and then he would add on the second and then the third. See how it, it tries to recom it and it breaks down and it can't go ahead and reach that line. Right. Those are your buy points. One buy point, two buy points, three buy points. Well, and then uh, you notice it blew right through the five minute low. Right. And if you're aggressive, you can even add right here because it comes back up and tries to yeah. test this. Well, yeah, you could actually have gone, uh, you could have went ahead and, 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 and pushed all the chips and after it went ahead and broke the, uh, the five minute high. Right. Now look where the five minute high is. The original five minute high of the day. Right. Yeah. That would be your fourth buy point. So can you bring that one down to the five minute high, uh, the first five minute high? So my point is, is that you could have went ahead and threw all your chips in the in the middle of the table right there. Mm -hmm. But the well, key thing is, is you have to have discipline. And and then the thing is, is that the discipline is, is that your if it goes if it reverses and goes back above that then you get out. So in this particular case, you would have had four buy-in opportunities. One, two, the first one is the first line right there where it broke that one. The second one is when it approaches it the second time. The third is when it approaches it the third time. And then when it crossed the five minute high, then you go in deep and, and hard and then you, you buy in there. And then the thing is, is then um, obviously you get out when you see the reversal. Yeah, wait for a but You know this stuff works because you like, you see the end of the day, you notice it didn't break the five minute low. So you couldn't break it through at the end of the day. Oh, couldn't come back up. But what I'm, yeah, I couldn't get back up. But what I'm trying to say, this is counterintuitive to the way human thought is done. Right. Yeah. What you want to be doing is looking for a place that you can put a line and give yourself a stop. Most people have no stops. They have no line stops. They have no verbal stops. They have no, they just are just hoping and praying. <laughs> In this particular case, you would have went ahead and given three opportunities. Nibble, nibble, and then go in uh, deeper because obviously it's 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 like it's descending down, and then you would have gone in heavy after it beat the, it went through that five minute um, high. Right. And then the thing is, is then you know you just watch it. Uh, it went pretty quick, and then obviously you would have got out about three o'clock. That's a huge movement, but what it's doing is you're adding to a position. The position's going your direction. You got stops to get you out, so you're you're taking a small loss, and then the thing is, is that this is how professional traders do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You should know your stop before you get in a trade. Well, if you, if you get into a trade and you don't have a predefined stop, then the thing is, it's not a trade; it's a wish. You can yeah. write that down. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, hold on. If you get into it, <laughs> you get.
kid in a tree. Without a stop. That'll be on your next book right without there. Without a stop. <laughs> yeah. Without a stop. I think it is in the book. Uh, I'll have to go ahead and, re and research it. If you get into a trade without a stop, then all it is is a wish. Hmm. But even even in, in the, you know, you got into this trade, it was a beautiful trade. But um, what I uh, found from Nicholas Darvis, how he used to do it, is, is that to get himself out of a trade so he, he made profit, is he would keep raising his, um, you know, the five, you know, the, the, the high and low. Right, and then yeah. he would have got out, uh, he would have got out on that, on that last green because, uh, you know, um, you know, that's where he would have got out. So, yeah. uh, because you don't know how high it was going to go up. I'm sure if you brought that up on a two day, you probably get even more information. Probably. Um, can you get that on a two day? See, see, it is right there. Yeah. See my point? Well, again, this was yesterday. Five minute high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. So uh, a good friend of mine over the years, Oliver Velez, he taught me that. Yeah. Um, yeah, trades And it. uh, it's the most fascinating thing because, you know, again, you know, if it doesn't break it, then you sell, you know. So that that should have been your um, basically the the place you're selling. Put it on a two day list, and then go ahead and and that you would have sold there. Yeah. Um, it, this stuff's not a mystery. This stuff happens um, because it's all done on computers. I learned that on on the New York Stock Exchange floor. That's just how it's done. There's nothing manual. I mean, they don't know what's going on. It's all done on computers. Right, computers yeah. determine all this stuff yeah so. well basically hey, uh, i'm gonna run brian um hopefully um uh you guys got something out of what uh i attempted to go ahead and and teach you uh what i've learned and so um i hope you guys have a great uh week i hope you do well my thinking is is that i think we're going to be up wednesday thursday friday but you know you're not supposed to hold overnight so if it doesn't go that way um you know don't uh um don't say anything to me but that's just what i think i think um we're kind of hitting the bottom yeah sounds good okay no cool thank you have fun in phoenix yeah um hopefully everybody will see you guys in san antonio in november um maybe we'll have our own little party off to the side um uh, <laughs> yeah why not okie doke and and let me know if you if you haven't gotten uh alan's millionaire mindset emails let me know um and uh, i can get those out Final Florida. yeah put them in yeah. a batch and forward them out so okie doke everybody have a good cool. night we'll talk to you guys later